the okay, entire pin. Recording is in progress. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you. It's been quite a while, but uh, I thank God that we are here today for yet another meeting. And um, I'm really looking forward to the great presentation. As usual, thank you very much, Prince, Prince Andrew, for the platform to hold this, uh, this um, needful meeting. And I thank you, everyone, who've been attending the meeting from onset to date. Thank you, Continental Board, UNAD, for the support that you have always given to everyone that has been coming into the meeting, the organization. Um, it's, a really, um, it, it's a really great uh, deal, uh, and I appreciate the work that you have always done. Yeah, so uh, we begin our meeting today. And um, to start us off, I'm gonna read us out the agenda for the day so that we can all be aware of what to expect in our meetings today. Uh, so uh, we are going to have our agenda today, uh, starting with, the, with, with, a, with an introduction speech, which will be given by our continental president who is uh, Dr. Richard uh, Sanko from Sierra Leone. Secondly, we are going to have an introduction of our guests. As you heard today, we are expecting some guests to be with us or some new participants, and we are going to allow them to introduce themselves to us so that uh, they can be able to participate in the meeting and feel at ease. Uh, thirdly, we are going to get into our presentation. And I am sorry to say that uh, Madam Juliet Miabo is not gonna be with us today. So the presentations are going to be facilitated by Queen Mother uh, because they work along with um, Madam Juliet. So she's going to help us uh, carry on the facilitation for our presentation. And uh, for the presentations, we are going to have Madam Chemeze Atama from Nigeria, who is gonna take 30 minutes in her presentation before we get into our Q&A. Secondly, we are going to have Madam Susan Yego from Kenya. She's gonna take us through the integration of ICT in agriculture and business. She's also gonna take 30 minutes before the questions and answer session. And lastly, we are going to have an open discussion on matters affecting the African continent. And I believe we can also even discuss, we can start off by discussing what uh, our continental president, uh, Dr. Richard Sanko mentioned to us whatever about the matter that is right now happening in Sierra Leone because I believe it's affecting the entire Africa. So we can actually talk about it and see how it's gonna, it, it, okay, the solution we can come up with and how much it is affecting the livelihood of the Africans. So lastly, we are going to have any other relevant business before we close the meeting. So to introduce to us the meeting today, we are going to invite our continental president, uh, Dr. Richard Sanko, to give us an introduction speech and introduce the organization, which is UNAD, before we carry through the agenda. So, Mr. President, Dr. Richard Sanko, you're most welcome. The floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Once again, uh, uh, we are back in our usual Monday session. And we want to welcome everyone. I join the Continental Secretary General to welcome everyone on board, and especially the, the new people who join us today to understand what UNAD is about and what we are doing in partnership. And so you are welcome and 
we want you to understand that UNAD, it means Unity Net Africa and Diaspora. And it means our focus is in Africa and also for Africans in the diaspora. And so therefore, our target, our major intervention is to ensure that we help to contribute to change the economic, the poor economic status of our people in Africa and ensure that Africa match up with uh, the global trend in terms of food security, uh, nutrition, uh, uh, energy, and all other things that are helpful in order for us to live as a complete normal human being that add to our respect and dignity. That's exactly what we stand for. So therefore, uh, we leave no one behind. We include everybody in our drive. So you are all welcome to ensure that you go through the process, make sure you listen and pay attention and be able to contribute towards the entire process. And so we have a lot to discuss today. So therefore, I don't want to waste our time. So I want to hand over back the baton to Madam Continental Safety General. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Continental President, Dr. Richard Sanko for the brief introduction. I believe uh, at least we have, uh, we have uh, caught something from the introduction just to know who UnityNet Africa and Diaspora are all about or who we are. And uh, we have uh, our UNI leaders here led by one uh, Mr. Lloyd Helperty who is um, one of the co-founders of UNI that uh, actually birthed UnityNet Africa and Diaspora. And uh, he's gonna talk to us and also just give us a brief about UNI and uh, maybe a bit of the formation of UNAD before uh, we kick off the agenda or the presentations that are incoming. So um, I'm just checking on my list if I can see any guests with us today. And we have uh, Chie, Chiemezei Atama, who is one of our presenters. But before the presentation, I would actually ask her to give a brief introduction of herself uh, so that we can touch base with who she is and the presentation that is forthcoming. Madam Atama, are you there? You can kindly yes, unmute I, your mic and say hello to us, Madam. Wow. Thank you very much, Jen. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, take the greeting depending on where you are. For us here in Nigeria, it's um, already after 5 p.m., so it's evening for us. I, like Jen already said, I am Sheme Zatama, and I'm the founding director of Equity Watch Initiative. I was here last week, and uh, I, I, I will say that I'm already very familiar with, uh, with uh, the system, uh, the, the people here, and the focus of the meeting. Having followed up for one week, I've been reading around all the posts in the group, and I'm so excited being in your midst. Um, I wouldn't want to say more because some of the introduction is also part of what I will do in the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Madam Atama, for that brief introduction. We are really uh, grateful uh, for your coming on board and uh, agreeing to uh, do the presentation so that uh, we can get to know more about you and more about the organization that you're working with and the work that you're doing in your community. You're so much welcome. Um, I can see one, Emiran Riziki. 
I'm hoping this is your first time to be with us here. Can you kindly introduce yourself to us? You can go right ahead, Riziki. We cannot hear you, Riziki. Your microphone is unmuted, but we cannot get your audio. Okay. As you wait for her to correct her audio, maybe we can go to the next person. Uh, I can see one Marukja. Marukja. I believe this is your first time to be with us in this meeting. Kindly unmute and introduce yourself to us. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my second time in the meeting. Okay. Yes. I'm from Suriname. Sorry, you're from? Suriname, a country in South America. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Good to have you on board. Yes. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you on board. Thank you for coming back to the meeting. Yes. Thank you. Uh, we have Marukja. Marukja, kindly unmute yourself and introduce yourself to us. Yes, I was the one to introduce oh, myself. Yes. My name is Marukja, yes. Oh, no, it's not Riziki. Okay, I thought, I thought it's Riziki because she's also unmuted. It is okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, so you're welcome. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, we have Victor N. Sande, National Coordinator. Uh, I don't have your real name, so I believe you're new here, or maybe it's your second time. Kindly introduce yourself to us. Victor and Sunday, is this your first name? Kindly unmute and introduce yourself. Okay. Um, I don't think you're able to unmute yourself, but we have one uh, Riziki. She says she's from Tanzania and her microphone is not working. It is very much okay. I hope you can hear us, which I suppose so because you have responded. Thank you for coming on board and it is always good to have you um, attend our meetings. Uh, so we have uh, Victor N. Sande. He says uh, he's joining us from Port Harcourt, that is Nigeria. You're very much welcome to the meeting. Yeah, you have spelled out that you cannot speak now, and we, uh, we, we, we are okay with that. You're so much welcome to our meeting, hoping that you're going to be joining our Monday meetings uh, that are forthcoming. Yeah, so before, uh, without taking any more time from our schedule, I want to invite Mr. Lloyd Helperty to say hello to us and maybe speak to us briefly uh, about uh, three or five minutes about UNI and any other relevant uh, information that may suit, may suit the meeting today. Mr. Lloyd, you're most welcome to speak to us, sir. Hello, good morning. Uh, well, it's my morning, I guess it's your evening. Uh, but yes, I'm coming in from Canada. Uh, I am a member of uh, the uh, Unity Net International Organization, which has been putting together this global Unity Network, including um, with uh, Carlos, who uh, did the initial presentation and opening remarks. Uh, it was sad for me as well to read uh, about what's happening now in Sierra Leone. I did look up and I posted in the chat a link to an article. I just read it uh, 10, 10 or 15 minutes ago as well in full and I, I actually suggest everybody should, should uh, do so so they can understand what's going on as well. 
Uh, so I am Lloyd Helferty. I am in Canada, as I noted. Um, so I'm with an organization called Energem University as well, uh, where I'm uh, a program development director and, so, and what I what, uh, have the name Sustainable Society Consultant uh, for many years. Um, so we have these solutions that we've been uh, promoting uh, for the sustainable development uh, agenda, uh, but it's been very difficult to move them forward. So uh, our strategy has been to develop these uh, systems of education and training, uh, especially for local people in these local communities so they can get the skills um, <clears throat> in order to actually uh, build and implement these solutions themselves. So we are really about empowering uh, local people uh, to actually implement the solutions. So we are focused on these what we call open source regenerative climate smart solutions um, and the education and training centers, which we now call Unity Gardens. So we have five different configurations of these Unity Gardens that we are promoting, uh, where we'll be leveraging a hybrid system of learning uh, which is essentially virtual uh, together with hands-on in the local communities in order to really uh, look at uh, how we can train up an entire generation, hopefully of uh, Africans, but also of African, the African diaspora, as well as people from around the world, but we are starting in Africa, um, who are the most marginalized in those communities so they can empower themselves to implement their own local solutions as much as possible. Uh, so uh, we, we say this is a, an anti-colonial model um, where we're not, we're trying to empower people uh, rather than going into their communities and doing it for them. Uh, we'd like to create a system that, uh, that uh, allows them to understand what are those solutions they need for themselves as much as possible and then empower them through whether it's financing or or uh, the tools that they need um, to implement themselves uh, in, in partnership uh, with a global community, uh, which we're calling the uh, Global Partnership for Regenerative Development, which is now coming together right now. Um, so our, our, our main team here in Toronto, uh, along with Carlos is working on that uh, to create these, these business partnerships across multiple ecosystems. So we have a seven sector partnership template, uh, which we're going to be leveraging both at the local levels, but also internationally uh, as we build this partnership network to support all the local communities uh, to achieve these goals that we want to achieve. Uh, looking beyond just the seven year horizon uh, right now, seven and a half years until 2030, uh, but looking at the next um, iteration of the global goals. And uh, so we want, what we want to do is create what we call a productive, collaborative, uh, cooperative, um, compassionate, regenerative economy that leaves no one behind. So the, the essence is that we, we have a framework for how we can do this. Uh, we are moving forward, um, but it will take some time. Uh, we're, we're not here to uh, do things immediately, but to build a global network that can support our local communities and entre entrepreneurs, uh, what we call the humanitarian entrepreneurs, um, who are implementing those local solutions in their local communities uh, in service to achieving those global goals, those SDGs. So thank you very much, Jane, and I will uh, stop there. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Lloyd, for that uh, comprehensive uh, background um, in matters of uh, unity, North Africa, and diaspora and uniformation. We really appreciate that, and I believe every one of us uh, has some understanding on the genesis of uh, both entities. Yeah. So, um, without taking any more time on the same. I would want to get into the main agenda for the day, which is our presentation. And we are going to have uh, Queen Madanina taking us through the presentation for the day. And uh, I'm just checking whether we have all our presenters on board. I can see we have uh, Madam Atama with us. 
and uh, Dr. Carlos has her presentation just in case she may not be able to project it. I believe Mr. Carlos will be standby so that uh, we can help out. But um, I know she will be able to make uh, the presentation and, uh, and screen share from her end. Madam Susan is not yet on board, but I'm going to reach out to her even as we wait upon her to come on board. So Queen Mother Nina, you're most welcome to take us through the remaining session for the meeting today. Queen Mother Nina, are you there to take us through the presentation for the day? Yes, I'm trying to pull it up. One moment, please. One okay, moment. thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Mom, mom. So as she's preparing uh, the presentation, uh, uh, is is there anyone else who is to introduce himself or herself so that uh, we don't leave no one behind? Um, good afternoon, all. I am John Bibangura. From Sierra Leone. Okay. Uh, can you guys see the presentation? Yes, we can. Okay. Yes, it, but I would have preferred if I if I share from my end. So that they can manage yeah, that'll be great. Itself. Let's uh, if she has the capability to share it, we should have her share it so she could go through it. Yeah. Okay. Thank I you. Have. Okay. So um, it's saying I cannot share. Is it possible to make me a host? Yes. Yes. Let's try to make you a host. One moment. Okay, so are you able to see my screen? Yes, we Hello? can see it. We can see it just fine. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. So once more, I wish to thank you very much for this uh, opportunity. Um, I Before I start, I would like to say sorry for the background noise you may be getting. My house is located near a, a small road. Mm -hmm. So the road is always busy okay. people passing. And because of uh, um, the experiences we are having Why in the Southeast, the every Monday is locked down. So we are not able to go to the office on Monday. So I'm actually at home and we are going to be getting that uh, background noise. So once more, I thank you very much for providing this uh, platform for me to speak, to present and share what we have been working on. I appreciate sincerely uh, Mr. Lloyd and uh, Dr. Carlos for the opportunity for sharing the invite with me and also creating the opportunity for me to make this presentation. Again, I say that my name is uh, Chemeza Atama and I'm the founding director of Equity Watch Initiative. Okay, so we are going to just be uh, sharing our journey so far and also um, sharing with you our future plans. 
And uh, as some of you may already know, Equity Watch is a registered uh, non-political, non-profit uh, uh, organization that is conceived, that was con that is conceived as a women-led organization, striving, you know, to reach out to men, women, boys, and girls to promote gender equality and empower women and girls. And uh, we have a mission, and our mission is to promote gender equality and empower women and girls to foster an inclusive and a sustainable future. And we are guided by a vision, which is to create a gender equitable world where men, women, boys and girls work as partners for a better future. Okay. So um, as you already know, we are working in Nigeria and Nigeria as a country, as most some of us may know, has been facing a kind of gender-based violence crisis that is deeply rooted in harmful traditional practices, cultural practices, religious norms, you know, that continue to hold women down. And uh, this particular issue has been uh, uh, worsened by a lot of other factors like insurgency. Uh, we have um, farmers said that's conflict, economic crisis, illiteracy, economic uncertainty, compounded with the COVID-19 pandemic. And again, we have climate change, all of which have combined together to worsen the situation of women and girls in Nigeria. And um, it is these issues actually that started um, making some of us uncomfortable. And we now, we are like, in what ways can we contribute? In what ways can we you know, work to at least address some of these issues and to ensure we have a better world, not only for women, but for everybody. And um, we have a lot of frightening statistics in Nigeria that actually speak to the fact that gender-based violence is a serious issue in Nigeria. For instance, the Nigerian Demographic and Health Survey report of 2018, you know, showed increasing trends again, um, on gender-based violence or violence against women, ranging from 31% in 2018, uh, 2008 to 25% in 2013, and we had 36% in 2018. This was actually before COVID-19. So if you look at all the issues that we have been experiencing from COVID-19 and all the uncertainties, all the conflicts, all the, the, the uh, insurgencies, of course, you know that we should be above even 60% by, by now, which is 2022. This again, um, then again, we have um, this uh, gender-based violence or violence against women and girls contributing and leading to a whole lot of other issues. For instance, Nigeria has one of the lowest rate of female representation in politics and governance by global standard, global and regional standard. In 2019, for instance, Women International League for Peace and Freedom ranked Nigeria 181 out of 193 countries in terms of women uh, participation in politics. You look at our maternal and child mortality rate is one of the worst. We are recording 917 uh, um, deaths per 1,000 life births in Nigeria. The same from uh, child mortality, we have 113.8 deaths per 1,000 life births. Other, other frightening statistics are also there. For instance, when you look at the widening gender gap in ICT, uh, National Bureau of Statistics they are, um, reported that we have just about 22% of men and girls in ICT. When you look at our economic system, the injustice is also there for you to see. Um, the report by, um, released by National Bureau of Statistics in 2020 shows that we have 82.9 million uh, Nigerians that are poor. Some are even below the poverty line as already shown by UN. 
So we have up to about 40.1% 40, 40 of Nigeria at that, at that level. Okay, so uh, if you add, disaggregate this data, that is the poverty data by gender, by location, you find that you know, those in, in rural communities bear the burden the more. Women and guests bear the burden the more. Again, when you look at our environment, environmental and climate issues, you find that it's also worse for women. So all these issues have made us, like I said earlier on, to start thinking on how can we put up measures that will address these issues and also make women to be on front burner in the spirit of leaving no, uh, no one behind. And so we were like, what can we do? What exactly can we do? From our own perspective and philosophy, we believe that there are two things that we can do. One of them is how to end all forms of gender-based violence, to end all forms of violence against women. Another one is we believe that if we end all forms of gender-based violence, and empower women and girls economically, socially, and otherwise. It is going to go a long way to creating an equitable society that will, of course, lead to sustainable development. That particular thinking stem from the fact that even UN know how critical gender equality is, and that is why it is number five in the SDG. And the belief that without achieving gender equality, there is no way we are going to be able to achieve sustainable development is like what is driving all our actions. That is what is pushing us, that is what is making us to work to ensure that we have that um, equitable society, fair society where everybody can operate, where everybody will be free to assess resources and where everybody can assess it on an equal basis. And so we were like, what um, can we do? And we started working around some of these issues that uh, some of these things that uh, I, I, you can see here. One of our targets is education and ICT. We believe so much that if the people are educated, if women and girls begin to get quality education, that it will go a long way in solving a, lot, a whole lot of other problems. We also believe that if we are able to address harmful traditional practices and also a, a kind of control the patriarchal masculinity that undermine women participation, that undermine women, uh, women actions, in some of these developmental issues, it will go a long way in helping us to achieve sustainable development. We are also believing that if we are able to achieve position, you know, it will go a long way also in helping them in contributing in other ways because without decision-making powers, Without women being able to be part of a, a, a governance, it will be almost impossible for them to even influence decisions, to even influence you know, other things that impact directly on their lives and the lives of their children. Then we are also concerned about body health and rights, especially sexual and reproductive health. One of the major problems we have here in Nigeria is overpopulation. The pop is our population, not, let me not say over, but is our population. So you look at it that some people do not really know how to manage their fertility. People do not know what to do to be able to manage their sexual and reproductive health. We cannot assess sexual and reproductive health services and a whole lot of other issues that are also contributing to this poverty level, contributing to inequality, and also escalating this gender-based violence. So we are also taking actions with respect to body health and rights. Then another important aspect is women economic empowerment. Like I said before, if you're able to address all these harmful practices, 
end all forms of gender-based violence and empower women economically is going to help us a lot in achieving sustainable development. Another important issue is climate change. Climate change we know affects women so significantly more than it affects men. Maybe I will leave that for a discussion I have down there, but it's a serious issue for us and we are working around climate change. So these, these key issues are what we think we, uh, we can address at our own cap uh, level to be able to promote this gender equality we are talking about and also to be able to empower women and girls. And we are focusing on these key areas because of the needs of our immediate community. This is where we have lived all our lives and we know that these issues, these issues are very critical. So in addressing some of these issues, we started in 2020. The organization was registered in 2020 and missed the COVID-19 pandemic. We had started taking on act, some activities before 2020, but it was officially registered in June 2020. And the registration, of course, was um, necessitated by the level of gender-based violence that we were experiencing during the COVID-19 pandemic. There was a whole lot of sexual harassment and abuse, elders, elder, domestic violence here and there, a lot of uh, issues emanating from people's inability to cope with COVID-19 that led to, you know, women and girls suffering all manner of uh, all kinds of things. And so in 2020, we started by organizing sexual uh, harassment awareness campaign uh, in schools, especially when uh, uh, schools uh, began to open. Before school opened, we, we are going to communities, speaking to them, organizing, organizing uh, um, um, this campaign for, for people in the community within the spaces that COVID-19 was able to allow us because it was really a serious issue in Nigeria. So we go to schools, we go to churches. This is a, a program we had in church, you know, talking about sexual harassment during COVID-19 pandemic. Other things we were also doing was engaging stakeholders like traditional rulers. We engaged religious leaders, opinion leaders. Majority of our activities, we also uh, carried out on A. We usually go to radio uh, for radio programs to talk about sexual harassment and abuse during COVID-19 um, pandemic. And after COVID-19, in fact, we have leveraged a lot on radio program television. This was a television program that we had in Nenugu State Broadcasting Services. And these are all different uh, radio programs that we have organized, reaching out to the public, to discussing uh, gender-based violence, sexual harassment and abuse, menstrual hygiene management, and the rest of them. Okay, so in all this, um, in all this our campaign, we started thinking about what can we do to address this issue of gender-based violence. You know, we, we noticed that majority of the time, people go to police station to report, people do a lot of things trying to draw attention to what has happened to them in, in, that is, in terms of harassment and abuse. However, some of these things are usually taken for granted here in Nigeria. People don't respect the law, people take it for granted. Our erratic, so, um, our erratic um, justice system is also not helping issues. And so we, we started thinking about what other actions can we take, you know, to ensure that we address this particular problem. And um, we noticed again that some of the sexual and gender-based violence also we are particularly happening within people's uh, proximity, as in we refer to it as proximity violence, because it's actually people that you trust, people that you know, you think uh, you are family, you think are uh, your brothers, maybe cousins, uncles, and all that. Close relations that will always, you know, abuse, abuse women and girls. So we started thinking on about how do we address this proximity violence? 
we identify domestic violence, sexual harassment, child molestation, emotional abuse, and all of them. And um, that thinking also was uh, strong because we noticed a lot of things we are changing. COVID-19, they kind of, you know, turned everything upside down. Yeah, we are more technologies that created fewer, uh, which created the restrictions and people we are, you know, making their choices, which was not in tandem with what was happening, you know, in traditional society. And people we are, you know, beginning to, uh, to, to get, gain different orientations on life, about life. And in most cases, we are beginning to create their own norms. And so we, we are trying to get something that can align to the, uh, what we are experiencing. We came up with a set of skills that embody learnings from empowerment self-defense practices, you know, which focus on awareness, recognizing danger signs, effective boundaries, uh, certain assertiveness, verbal and physical uh, self-defense. Uh, defense skills. So leveraging on this, we started up training our, our members first. We got some of our, our members trained by a global group, which is called ESD uh, Global. And uh, we now started, you know, um, we now started stepping down the training. So this, these are the tra some of the trainings we have organized around the empowerment self-defense. Uh, meanwhile, empowerment self-defense as a skill have actually been tested in other countries like USA, Canada, uh, even in few African countries like Kenya, Rwanda. For instance, uh, by next two weeks, some of our members will be attending another global training in Rwanda, you know, just trying to, because what it does is to empower women and girls on what actions they should take if they are in cases of abuse and harassment. So rather than pushing it back to the government, maybe you're telling the person to go and report, you teach the person skills that the person will take in that particular process to ensure that uh, the person is safe. So these are some of the trainings we we able to get support from one organization in US that is called Impact Global. And we organize this training during uh, international Day for the elimination of violence against women. We also uh, were able to uh, work with UN women during the 16 days of activism last year to organize the training for undergraduates, uh, female undergraduate students in here in UNN. Okay. So here again are some of our advocacy uh, visits and some of them were able to join us during that international day for the elimination of violence against women. We have here the Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration, University of Nigeria and Sukan. We also have here the Dean of Students Affairs in the person of Professor Omeje, who also came to address us in one of uh, our, in this particular event. And these are some participants in the, in the training. It also uh, involves road work, you know, because it was an international day for women and we wanted to also make little noise. So we went on road work and, and all of that. So again, here we have also that the same thing, our empowerment self-defense, we took it to secondary schools during the uh, international International Day for the Girl Child. So we took the training again to uh, schools, training guests, all these participants are guests, we trained them. We usually don't used to have more than 30 people in our, in our trainings. How, because we have, uh, we have uh, members who are already trained. So when we go to schools, we split them and they start training uh, students. So this, uh, again, is one of our advocacy visits during one of the International Women's Day. I think that was 2021. Yeah, so we visited some local government chairmen, drawing the attention to issue of women in leadership, uh, issue of environmental sustainability, and all of that. Okay, so 
Again, uh, we used to organize uh, training on accountability principles because it's something that is very key to us in our organization. So here we uh, organize accountability training for other CSOs around here in Osaka. Then we also engage stakeholders once in a while to discuss on issues of gender-based violence, and some of them are what we have, show, we have shown here. We also have serious interest in peace and security because we believe that without uh, peace and security, we will not be able to achieve um, to achieve much. So we need to enjoy relatively certain level of uh, um, uh, peace in our community to be able to operate well. So in this particular community, they have been having series of issues and Sometime last year, they wrote our organization to see if we can intervene in the matter. And what we started doing was to go to the community, start organizing, uh, start organizing focus group discussion for people in the community, especially the youth. Please, there is a heavy rain here. In case you are, I don't know if you're able to hear me. It's raining very, very seriously here. Please let me know if you're able to hear me. Yes, we hear you. Hello. Okay. okay. Go ahead. We oh, are yeah. hearing. We are hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So in this community, um, I said they, they had serious community uh, uh, class, uh, class, um, issues, and we were invited. So what we did here was we started talking one on one with some groups in the community the youth, the women, and at the end of the day, we are able to uh, come up with strategies that we are now using to deal with the issue. And we are happy that, uh, that uh, the issue is gradually being addressed. Right now, what we have done is after our intervention, we pulled all the youth and created the WhatsApp platform for them. We had the interact, we attend their meetings every, every Saturday. They organize a meeting for all the youth in the community every Saturday evening by 9 p.m., which I, I usually attend. I will always be there, you know, listening to what they are saying. And at the end of the day, we found that their major problem was poverty, a missed lack of infrastructure in the community. They are basically, their youth are basically not doing anything. They have no access road and all of that. So uh, at a point, they even agreed in the, in the WhatsApp platform to start contrib making contributions to hire people to come and work on their roads. Otherwise, they are almost being cut out entirely from the rest of the world. Going to the village is a tug of war because they have no access road. So right now, the youths have taken it upon themselves despite having nothing doing. People are laboring, contributing money, and they are contributing it you know, under our care. So they are contributing the money in, a, in an account that we created for them. So from the money, we'll be able to uh, uh, at least see if we can reach out to people to also help them to at least fix their road, which is a major challenge for them. And they are also thinking that if they are able to get the road, maybe they can get uh, help access to other empowerment uh, programs that can help the community to grow. So that's how we are managing to address, address the issue. So another, okay, another thing we are also, uh, that is also very critical to us is the fact that we need to work with men to be able to address some of these issues. Yes, we are working to uh, promote gender equality, and we are working with the mindset that women has been left behind for a very long time. However, we are also not ignorant of the fact that we will not be able to achieve anything even without engaging the men. So we usually organize pro a program that we call, uh, uh, that we, a, a program that we use to promote positive masculinity. We organize it for the boys, we organize for the men, engage them in discussions, raise some of these uh, gender issues, raise, you know, tell them how they can come in, 
encourage them to see their partners or the, uh, to see the opposite sex as partners in progress. And that's where we think that even if we bring any program, if you're able to sensitize and you know make them to be aware that these people are not actually coming to fight them because majority of the time, the men around here will always think that you as a woman who is talking about gender is coming to fight them. So you have even some professors who once you mentioned anything gender, uh, they're already seeing you as this woman that is coming to challenge the status quo. So we felt that one of the important things we should do is to continue to engage them in conversation so that they will understand that we are all partners in progress. So most, some of these activities are also uh, geared towards that. Then we also have uh, another important uh, project, which we call the Wind Pass for Sustainability. And that particular project emanated because as we were going around, you know, uh, creating awareness, sensitizing uh, people about sexual harassment and abuse. We also got to know through teachers in secondary schools that one of the greatest challenges that guys are having in rural communities is that they don't have access to menstrual hygiene management. So um, many of them, we are telling us how some guys go to the extent of using leave when they are menstruating. And it was very, very, um, uh, it was too, a kind of too much for some of us to take how a girl can fold the leaf and use it for menstruation because they cannot assess menstrual uh, hygiene products. So we also started thinking about what we should do. And uh, we noticed again that in addition to not even having access to menstrual hygiene management, a lot of them don't even understand. They don't have the necessary information that will help them you know, to navigate through, the, uh, to manage their menstruation. Not even only for girls, even women, because we have organized programs for mothers, we have organized for teenage and adolescent girls, and we have seen that it is a big issue. Each time we go on air to talk about it, we will always run away because of course, you know, people are sharing experiences of how uh, lack of menstrual hygiene management has caused them a lot of uh, reproductive tract infections, vaginal diseases, and all of that. And, you know, and it is, it's, it's a whole, it's a, it's a big issue. It's a big issue because even the people you think may know, do not know. So the awareness desensitization programs we have been organizing is actually very helpful. And we talked a lot about it on radio. And another thing we also found in our research, in the course of researching around that issue, is how the use of PAD is even constituting a lot of environmental issues. Because part, the ordinary part that women use is made up of plastic. And so, as we know, plastic contains about 90% protein, and which uh, cause a lot of environmental issues. And some of these uh, uh, parts, you know, of course, we always plant in the landfills because in Nigeria, we have an appropriate uh, waste management system. So it's not even uh, easy for people to manage their menstruation very, very well, especially when you want to talk about how they dispose of the use plan. So we realized again that uh, the, the way we manage our menstruation is also causing a lot of environmental factors, which, are, uh, which is a very serious concern for us. So in our organization, we came up with this the Wind Pass for Sustainability project that is geared towards making sanitary parts accessible for the poor and also combating environmental issues arising from, you know, population who are socially and economically stable but have no idea of their environmental footprint. So we go around teaching uh, teenage girls how to make uh, clothes back. We talk to them on how uh, they can manage their menstruation. Sometimes we also uh, distribute parts. This Available because we usually go to individuals to beg them to donate funds for people in rural communities that have no access. But the most sustainable alternative, which we have found, is the fact that we can leverage on clothes pan, which is reusable and you know, which is uh, more readily available, and which we can even train people 
on how to make it. So we go to schools, to communities, to teach people how to make a clothes pad. As you can see, this is one of the trainings we organize in one of the schools. And sometimes, most of the time, when we go to schools, we usually involve both men, uh, boys and girls in the training. And that is happening because even uh, internationally, there is a global call to end all form of discrimination against menstruation. So we believe that involving men in that, but in this training, or in the course of talking about menstruation, will help to break the taboo, we help to address the discrimination, we help to reduce gender-based violence. So this is part of uh, what we have been doing. In this particular training, we are, we are trying to train people that we will mobilize to rural communities to train other people. Okay, this is also a uh, part of our uh, menstruation uh, program. We also involve mothers because we realize that mothers are not also playing their role out of ignorance, out of naivety, they are not doing what they are supposed to do. Because sometimes when we go for these programs, we usually uh, organize focus group discussion with guests. They tell us their experiences about when they had their first menstruation, their experiences about how girls around them care. And one of the things with the information we got that made us to stand and stand very firmly about this project is, if, is about how men are leveraging on you know, lack of information uh, 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 by these teenagers to abuse them, to molest them, to harass them. For instance, one student shared experience in this particular school. We visited this school and one of them came to uh, share experience with us about how a girl in this school is one of the famous schools in Soka. But one of the guys in this school was abused, raped, not only infected by HIV, but also was pregnant. What happened? The girl was having menstrual cramps, you know, pains that women used to experience during menses. And rather than, you know, maybe uh, going to the mother, she, they said the mother was not always dead of her concern. So she decided to confide in her uncle, one of her uncles. And her uncle told her that the only way the pain will stop is when she has sex. And the girl ended up having sex with the, the uncle so that the menstrual cramps would stop. And the uncle ended up infecting her with HIV and also making her pregnant when she was in chest. Again, another woman came to tell us about how a girl started menstruating, did not know about how to manage it. She didn't know anything to do. And she decided somebody that was passing told her, hey, we are menstruating. What hey, you didn't know your mother didn't tell you about menstruation. She said that yeah, she has never heard about it. And the man now offered her three naira in those days to buy pad. That was how the girl bought the pad. It became now a habit that every month the man will give her three naira to buy a pad. At the end of the day, the man got her pregnant, infected her with HIV. So menstrual hygiene management is a very big issue for us. And we are really uh, taking actions. If you follow us on Facebook, it's like everyday program. We are always, even this coming Sunday, we already have a program in the church where we are going to go to talk about it because it's causing a whole lot of issues for our girls. And again, um, we also saw the need for us to raise awareness on ICT especially to encourage our guests to develop interest in STEM subjects. And we came up with this particular campaign, Awakening the Female Technological Giants. So we go to schools to talk to them about technology, encourage them to develop interest in STEM, and also uh, encourage them to begin to learn uh, ICT. And recently, we even started negotiating with our university on how they can leave some laptops to us because um, some people have been coming to us to say, please, can you help to organize a, a ICT training for our guests, especially those that finish their junior work. They have nothing to win and they will stay up to two to three months at home doing nothing. And, you know, we, they say that an idle mind, you know, is a devil's workshop. 
So we feel seriously that these girls need to be engaged. And the proper way to engage them is to channel their attention to ICT so that they can also you know, grow to be able to, uh, to compete at par with uh, other people in the society. So these are part of the work we are doing around the education. We are also promoting open knowledge through uh, the little work we are doing with Wikipedia. We promote open knowledge system and, and also liberate on the um, initiative to uh, encourage women in ICT, as you can see from some of these pictures. Then uh, another critical uh, area for us, like I said, is climate change. And women and girls, as we know, experience the greatest impact of climate change, which tends to deepen the existing gender inequality and pose a unique threat to their lives and livelihood. Why is it doing that? It's doing that because the majority of the women rely on natural resources for their livelihood. You know, they also have least capacity to respond to natural hazards. Women also commonly face, uh, face higher risk and uh, greater burden in situations of poverty. And because of these issues, they are, are most affected by climate change. And the important thing is that around here, people have failed to understand that women have some important role to play in climate change adaptation and mitigation, you know? And it's happening because they have no access to uh, resources, women on equal participation in decision-making power, and all of that is limiting the ability to participate effectively in climate, uh, in climate change actions and different leadership. So at the win, we are intentional in engaging women and girls in sustainable practices that will not only contribute to climate change adaptation and mitigation, but will also reduce gender-based violence and promote gender and climate justice. And so these are some of the things we started doing thinking creatively on how we can engage women in smart agriculture. It is a big issue for us because majority of the people in rural areas are women. Majority of these women rely entirely on agriculture. However, the level of insecurity in Nigeria is no longer permitting them to go to their farm. And that is why there is high, uh, high prices of food are going high every day. Insecurity is affecting women farmers. Majority of the time, they get raped in their farm. They are abused. Majority, some of them even get killed because they are going to farm. So uh, what is it that we can do? We started exploring. Is it possible for us to engage in something that can bring farming closer to the people? Is it possible for us to do something that can make people to produce both during season and out of season? And we thought that the best way we can do that is through smart agriculture. And so uh, we are exploring that now. This is the first farm we have established. And we have uh, women that we are already training in this farm, believing that, okay, believing that um, these women will be able to pick up and, you know, if possible, we begin to explore the possibility of supporting women because right now there is hunger everywhere and this hunger is affecting everything leading to increased gender-based violence you know a lot of unimaginable things happening because people are hungry so this is what we are doing in order to address that another thing that we think is very important is climate change education climate education rather we found that majority of the people here does not even know what we mean by climate of uh, climate change. Uh, during COP26, one of the activities we do, we did, was to uh, carry out a kind of survey in the university. Just do you know about climate change or what do you know about climate change? They give us a brief uh, thought about what they know. And after that exercise, we realized that of more than 80% of university students did not know anything at all about climate change. And that was where we started organizing climate uh, education for students and even going to community to sensitize them about climate education. Sometimes if we go for community outreaches, 
they will tell us there are too much rains that is spoiling uh, their crops, damaging their crops. There, we are, there was too much heat, but they don't know that it's climate change and they don't know actions they should take to be able to address that. So it's part of uh, what we have been trying to do in our organization. Again, we also focus on children because we believe in catching them young. So sometimes we gather children, teach them how they can separate waste, what they can do to help our environment, literally two children, and we believe that it's making a whole lot of impact. Then uh, sometimes we also join the global community in climate activists. So these are some of the things uh, we have been uh, doing around that. Okay. Then another critical issue for us is the, the issue of plastic pollution and littering. This is our university environment. If you watch very well, you can see that the whole of the, the environment is littered. And that is also part of what we do when we go out to sensitize people. But in our organization, we started building trash bins out of our own uh, little efforts. Presently, we have constructed and distributed up to 30 trash bins. You can see some of them here carrying our names. And we usually mark them in strategic locations so that people can drop their trashes as they go around. However, we have come to see that people need to really uh, desensitize for them to even use the trash bin, as they don't consider it sometimes. Some of them don't consider it as uh, something they should do. They think it's like wasting their time going to put their crashes in. In this place, you can see one of the cleanup exercises we organized. This was what we gathered just in a location inside our university. So if we can gather this type of things inside the university and you know, as leaders, you can imagine what is happening outside the university. Anybody that is familiar with Nigeria, of course, we know that what we are talking about is a big issue. So in this particular uh, picture, we went talking with women in rural uh, communities, you know, to understand some of the challenges they are facing. And this is a group of women that, you know, process cashew. They process cashew nuts. So when they buy cashew nuts, they process it and they sell the seed. And it was very, very disheartening, you know, and emotional again, talking with these women. And they, share, uh, uh, and share, they were sharing experiences about some of the challenges they were having in doing their business. One, they don't even have the capacity to buy the cashew nuts. So most often they go to the men that sell the cashew nuts who give it to them on credit in banks. And their own is to take it home, uh, process it locally, extract the seed, take it back to them. And those people will now give them, you know, small money for feeding for the day. And you can see their hands. This is some of the things that the cashew processing uh, cashew not processing is causing to their hands. One of yeah. them, this particular person, explained to me how she has had miscarriage three times, three times. And I, when I was now asking her what happened and uh, you know and all that, she said each time she fries the cashew, you know, she starts having chest pains, and from there she will start coughing, and the next thing is miscarriage. So we found that the about the smoke that these women inhale in the process of frying this cashew nut is disastrous. As you can see from this picture, it's one of the, the kitchens where they fry the cashew. What you are seeing on the ground here is some of it's the cashew nuts they have spread under the sun, which they will now fry. And this is what is coming out from the cashew nuts that is entering inside a, a pregnant woman's uh, uh, tummy. And, you know, causing her a whole lot of uh, issues. And uh, we felt that the shoe is a very big opportunity because it's a cash crop. And in Nigeria, Enugu State, which is where we are located, has been rated as one of the uh, most uh, uh, the, uh, highly, uh, what do they call it? The shoe uh, processing zone in Nigeria, as in we have so many plantations of cashew in, in Enugu State. And it's usually these women that process this cashew. 
So if these women are supported and the process is mechanized, it's going to contribute a whole lot in, in our economy. However, the way that the, the way and manner they are going about the consumers is very, very dangerous, not only to their health, but to the health of their children and even the environment. Again, it's also contributing significantly to deforestation. As you can see here, these are some of the firewoods they have packed, which they use in doing in frying the cashew nuts. And of course, all this, as you know, leads to deforestation. So after that incident, we have to go visiting uh, women beg, in their homes to look at their you, kitchens. Madam, and you can see this. Hello. Yes, Madam Atama, I beg to interrupt you. Yes. Yeah, we kindly request you to wrap, to wrap up your presentation, please. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So some of okay, the, please, these please. are some of the kitchens we got in the process of doing that, which uh, we are showing. So uh, what our future plans are, we have designed a program which we call Boot Camp uh, Program, Equity Watch Boot Camp Program, that is committed to, you know, hosting uh, teenage and adolescent girls for one week, for a one week program. And in that one week, we'll be uh, trying to build their capacity and skills around this empowerment step defense, around how they can manage their menstruation and other things. Then we also have designed a program we call Pass for Sustainability Initiative. We have our Echo Smart Farm, uh, um, open knowledge and gas in, uh, IC, gas in ICT initiative and our clean uh, cook stove initiative. We're also targeting a kind of um, establishing skill acquisition centers where we can begin to train some of these girls and make them to be more effective in the society. Then we are looking, we are already in it talking about promoting positive masculinity and climate education. We are doing all these things because we have some strengths. Our strength lies on our location. We are, our organization is located in right, in, right inside the University of Nigeria and Sukkot. And what that entails is that we have, you know, uh, human resources. We have people with capacities that can drive some of these initiatives. And we also have a pool of young people that, um, a pool of young people that are volunteering for the organization. Again, the University of Nigeria itself is also a strength for us because we, we, we partner with them and we are also negotiating with them on some other things that we can do. Our office, for instance, is located at National Energy Research Center, right inside UNN. So in terms of this ecosystem, we are discussing with them on what, how we can go about it to be able to impact women in rural communities. Like I earlier stated, we have strong sense of accountability. We have undergone series of trainings on accountability, and we are also stepping it down to other people. Then again, uh, is our, our challenges. We have a lot of challenges. The location again is a challenge for us because, because of the university. We have high influence of uh, young people in the community because the University of Nigeria is the first indigenous university in Nigeria. So we operate a federal character, meaning that people from all over Nigeria come to school here. So it makes the, the place, even though it's a rural community, you have a, a whole lot of people that are impacting the community in, in, in some negative ways. Then for the community members, we also have high level of ignorance and lack of awareness because the indigenous people are not going to school. You know, when the university is there, they don't have the resources to train their children in that university, despite that the university is located in, their, in the place. So it's a whole lot of uh, issues for us. And, 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 and we express a whole lot of challenges, all the sexual harassment, sexual and reproductive health issues, and a whole lot of other issues. The most uh, important challenge we are facing is funding. Most of these activities I have, I have uh, shown you are majorly being funded by, by, by uh, some, us, some of us in the, in the organizations. We use our personal salaries to conduct some of these activities because we have no funding. Then we also saw that we, 
need to train the capacity of volunteers or other people that are ready to work with us. And because of the location, we don't really have many NGOs around here. Majority of them are located in Enugu, and we are in Osuka. Osuka is, a, is, rural, is rural. So we need to do capacity of people also to be able to, uh, to, be, to start out little, little organizations coming up to be able to do this work. Then we are not getting support, the necessary support from our government. The political will is not there. Another challenge we are facing is non-implementation of policies. We have robust policies in Nigeria. For instance, we have VAP Act that was passed in 2015, which is actually putting a kind of torchlight on universities in terms of sexual harassment. But all these policies, especially those related to sexual harassment, are not being implemented. And it's a very big issue for us. We are also looking at if it's possible to get partners that can work with us in this particular uh, uh, project. This is our contact, uh, uh, our contact, our Twitter, our Facebook, our website. Even though the website we are still developing it, but it's already functional. But if you want to really see uh, some of these things and if we are really doing it. You can follow us either on Twitter or on our Facebook page. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Hello, yes. Yeah, go ahead, Jane. Yes, yeah, I'm already much. done. Thank you. Yes, yeah, thank you very much. We really appreciate your presentation. Yeah, thank you for uh, the elaboration and the comprehensive um, input that you have put into your presentation so that uh, we can get the nitty gritty of uh, what you do on the ground and um, the challenges that you face as an organization and uh, as the people of Nigeria. So uh, I want to welcome anyone with a question towards the presentation of um, Madam Atama to kindly raise up your hand so that uh, we can direct the questions to her and she can address them. Anyone with a question in regards to the presentation? or any additional information you may want to pass across? Well, uh, I just want to comment in the area of uh, gender-based violence issues. How does it look like the issue of your, uh, policy, gender-based policy system, and as to uh, practice in, in Nigeria? How, how does the reconciliation look like? Is it friendly or maybe the opposite, like also in other countries? Sorry, Thank you very sorry much, Dr. Carlos, Carlos, I didn't quite get, get you. Yeah, I, I, I'm just concerned about you. You earlier highlighted the issue of uh, gender, gender based violence issues that is really prevalent in, in Nigeria. So I'm, I'm, I'm asking how does it, the policy system, the issue of a gender-based policy system, and also the issue of practice and uh, versus, uh, okay, the implementation process, uh, how does it look like? You know, does, does it have a, an equity system or an equality system? Does it really, you see there is a progress around issues of uh, gender-based violence in Nigeria? Uh, for me, for me, and I think for other gender experts too who are working around here, we will not say that there is any progress. In fact, we are going back. That is because um, recently um, there was this gender bills that was um, submitted to the uh, National Assembly. And just at the point people were thinking that the gender bill will make a headway, it was turned down. 
it was turned down on the ground that it is against their religion and the, and all of that. So we are not really making any any progress. I I don't know if you are talking about policies. If you are talking about policies, um, like I mentioned, we have robust policies on ground. The problem is implementation. Uh, I used to tell them that when people go for seed of, for instance, uh, you see uh, people running uh, around the whole street of New York. At the end of the day, they will just append their signature and bring it home here for us. But nothing in the CEDAW is being implemented here. For instance, it's only in Nigeria that you still have uh, about uh, three point something percent women representation in the parliament. In, across Africa, I don't think we still have any such uh, statistics. I, I mean, at the Senate, then uh, when you come to um, um, a National Assembly, we are still recording about 7% women representatives. It's, 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 not a prog it's not progress as far as I'm concerned. I don't know, it's raining here, so I don't know if I got you right and if I answered the question. Yeah, that, that that is that is right because it's also like, uh, but in Sierra Leone is a bit more better in relation to the, the strength and implementation of the gender policies, and also look, looking at the equity representation of women in uh, in public offices as well as also in private. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Kualo, for your question. Yeah, hello. Uh, anyone else has a question directed to Dr. Kama in regards to the presentation? Hello. 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 Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, go right ahead. Yeah. Can hear you. Okay, yeah. Good evening from Port Harcourt, Nigeria. Uh, Dr. Kama, that's a wonderful uh, presentation from you. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, I, sorry, I, I, I didn't stay all through the, when you started, but I, I think I, I was able to come across where you mentioned about uh, agricultural uh activities you're carrying out and then uh, i think climate change and i wanted to ask uh, uh do you how do you involve tree planting in your climate change uh, uh, uh impact activities and so on because uh, uh for us we are interested in uh, uh, uh mapping of the sacred sites especially the tree planting uh, following uh unity net activities uh, so uh, do you involve your volunteers in tree planting? And then how do you get your, what, what type of trees, if, I, if you do? Uh, and then uh, how can we really provide support to you? Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Yes, it's a very critical area for us, very important for us. We, uh, we engage in tree planting, but unlike other organization, other organizations, we don't just plant three, any, any tree we see. We focus more on food trees. We believe that if we engage uh, women in planting of what we call economic trees, it will go a long way in playing uh, dual roles. One, it will help in uh, climate change. And secondly, it will help in economic empowerment of the women. So when we go planting trees, we focus specifically on those trees that we know we bring money, um, um, we bring money will improve the livelihood of uh, women. For instance, fruits is also becoming very, very, uh, 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 the prices of fruits, for instance, is becoming unbearable in Nigeria. You know, a common man can no more get fruits to eat. So we focus on those fruits plants in, in our tree planting. And uh, in, in, like that, that is exactly why I said that we are not getting the necessary support from our government. I remember that at a point after uh, carrying out our advocacy visit to local government chairman in Enugu North in the Torah Zone, we put up a proposal pleading with them to support us 
in engaging women in planting of economic trees. They kept telling us, come today, come tomorrow, till today we didn't get any single support from them. And some of these food trees are very expensive to buy. Sometimes one, a quality one could go for 2,500, 3,000 Naira. So it's only when we uh, uh, get support or people donate that we go planting. But that is what we are focusing on, food trees. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I, I, do you mean that uh, you don't engage the volunteers in a tree planting campaign, uh, maybe at specific times, uh, so that uh, maybe such trees could be mapped, uh, the site for such trees could be mapped, and, uh, uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, make sure that it is sustained and so the activities are sustained. Uh, because in un un Unity Net, we talk about uh, three of peace and so on. So I uh, don't know. Do yeah, you have we a, engage, a yes, campaign? we engage volunteers. And sometimes these volunteers even bring the uh, uh, some of the trees that we plant. The only thing is that we focus more on planting of food trees. So we engage volunteers and we'll be very happy to work with your organization to be able to track the trees we are planting. We, uh, maybe if I get your contact, we would like to reach out so that we uh, discuss on how we can go about that. Thank you. Yeah, Dr. Atta, uh, Atama, can you also maybe a bit elaborate as to how the harmful traditional practices uh, affected, especially the girls in school, you know, uh, do they, does, okay, let me do preempt the answer. Maybe I can learn from you because I've implemented uh, um, and still implementing issues of uh, around harmful uh, traditional practices in Sierra Leone and together with uh, women organizations in Sierra Leone. But maybe how are you doing it to ensure that we have the girls in, in school and they finish school? GM, that is fair. If you imagine it, some mutilation, child marriage, uh, widowhood exactly. practices, and um, uh, widowhood practices and uh, 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 what we call toxic, because um, uh, some of the masculine ideologies that are toxic also helps in perpetuating some of these things. So how we go about it, like I have explained before, is that we try to find the root cause by engaging traditional rulers, by engaging religious leaders, by engaging opinion leaders. We feel that these people are very critical in addressing some of these uh, 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 some of these norms because they are systemic. Because they are systemic, there is no amount of intervention you will bring that we have to address it unless you tackle it from the roots. And one of the painful ones that we saw, especially during the pandemic, is how some families we are giving out their children to ma in marriage so that they can reduce the burden of hunger in the family, you know, by reducing the number of people eating and also thinking that the man that they are giving their daughter will be able to support the family. So it was a big issue. Majority of, uh, of the women actually, um, uh, um, actually because of sexual and reproductive health issues, lack of access to um, uh, contraceptives and all that, you know, especially the teenage ones got pregnant during that COVID period and it made them to, to go out of school. So in so many schools we went to, they kept giving us statistics of number of guests that did not return to the school after, after COVID. And we think that if these people have the required knowledge and information and access to services, it, will, it, it shouldn't have been like that. So some of these are the traditional, um, uh, the harmful traditional practices that we have identified and that we are working around.
But also, I, okay, thank I you also very added, much. Uh -huh. I also added. On yeah, you the can notice. go on, Doctor Carlo. I also added on the notice if you maybe okay in relation to your own ways of doing things in order to address or mitigate this one. If uh, there are policy, there is a policy system that you are working with to reconcile or maybe to help mitigate. Sorry, is that question for me? I can't hear you very well. I sent I sent Hello. it already on the chat. Okay, okay, sir. So. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. I thought she was supposed to attend to your question on your on the chat, but it's well and okay. Anyone else with another question in regards to Madam Atama's presentation? Kindly raise your hand for an opportunity to ask your question or to give your input. Anyone before we go to the next presenter? Okay, if there be no one, thank you very much, Madam Atama. Once again, for uh, making this comprehensive uh, presentation to us and for giving us an understanding of uh, the situation on the ground when it comes to the women and the girl child in Nigeria. We really appreciate that. Thank you for also answering the questions uh, that were brought uh, forward by the participants and answering them so well with so much understanding. We really appreciate you and the work that you're doing uh, to the women Thank and you. the girls in Nigeria. Thank you, Madam Jen. Yeah, keep up the great work. And Thank I believe you. that Thank uh, you're going to you. yeah, you're gonna have partnerships and collaborations so that uh, you can push this work forward and even reach the many communities that are yet to be reached. Yeah, so we go to our next presentation. Thank you. And I believe Thank we you. have... Yeah, most welcome. We go to our next presentation, whereby we are going to have Madam Susan Diego from Kenya, who is going to make a presentation on ICT integration in agriculture and business. Madam Susan Diego, I hope you're ready to make your presentation. And I believe you had requested us to, uh, to do a screen sharing or project your presentation. And uh, your presentation is with Dr. Carlos, and um, I believe he can uh, help us project it, if you don't mind, with Dr. Carlos. Madam Susan, are you there? You can come through. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Jen, uh, our, our ABLE president of uh, Unity Net Kenya chapter. I'm sorry, I have been, and thank you, the uh, CEO for Unity Net Continental, uh, Professor Loy, together with the uh, with with uh, with Andrew, uh, Prince Andrew, and our Continental President, President uh, Dr. Carlos, and also all the participants for today's Unity Net meeting, uh, UNAD meeting. I'm sorry, I've been away from this for long because we have been so so busy with so many activities, ASK show that ended yesterday, 
and many, many other activities. So we couldn't have find, found time to be in this forum. I have this ICT uh, program. It's a quite a long program, integration of ICT in agriculture, uh, business, uh, agriculture and business and even trade. I don't know whether I, I introduced myself. I'm Susan Yego and I am chief agricultural officer and also agricultural engineer. I have worked in the Ministry of Agriculture for over 30 years, teaching broadly uh, many topics on in agriculture, sustainable, uh, the sustainable uh, agricultural projects, um, uh, food processing, uh, engineering. I've done a lot for the last 30, 38 years. And now I am on, as I, 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 I prepare to exit the government as uh, civil service, I'm now on integration of agriculture integration of ICT in agriculture, business, and even trade. Now, this is a program that I've gone through and I'm currently training the youth. I'm also currently training the women. And I thought of starting the program also in UNAD with UnityNet. Uh, today's program, it's going to be introduction because of time. And then next week, if I will be given another opportunity, I'll continue with the program so that it's very interesting. We are going to learn a lot. Um, if, she, if there's nobody sharing the screen, I'm just able to, uh, I'm able to just go through, uh, I'm able to take you through the introduction part of um, integration of ICT in agriculture. And I have the point, or I have the, what do you call this? I had given out um, the, 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 what I was going to present, I'd given out to Madam Jen, so that she can be able to, because I don't have a computer right now. My computer is busy somewhere. I'm using my uh, smartphone. Okay, so we are going to go directly into what is ICT. ICT actually has so many, uh, it has terminologies that we need to get to know. And after we have known the terminologies, most of us do know them, but it's good to take you through them uh, so that we may be able to you will come across these terminologies here and there. And because of that, it's good for us also to just go brush off, brush them off, uh, brush them just kind of um, uh, briefly, okay? <laughs> so what is ICT? Integration of ICT in agriculture. What is ICT to you? What is ICT? ICT is information and communication technology. This is an extension term for information technology that stresses the role of unified communications and the integration, telecommunication and computer. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing the screen. I don't know, can you hear me? Yes, yes, go ahead. yes we hear you. Hear yes, me? yes, yes. We, hear, we are hearing you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear? Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah. I've given out. You can go ahead. Okay. 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 I've just given a summary. I've given a summary. Okay. I have given a summary. I have given a yes, I'm going on. I have given a summary on introduction of ICT. Mm -hmm. And what is a Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi is it means Fidelity, what is you are breaking, Madam Susan. We can hardly hear you. Again, virtual private network. What is APN? Hello, Madam Susan. You're breaking, we can hardly get you. Hello, Madam Susan. 
Can you hear me? There's a disconnect on your end. Okay, it seems we've lost her. We can get to, we can hardly get her. Um, yes. let me see. So I, I think maybe uh Yeah, you, I think she's gone offline. She's gone off. Uh there's something wrong with the network. There's something wrong with the network. Uh yeah, some, we can I've given you the terminologies the for you are breaking. Yes, I have given you the terminologies for uh, for ICT. Now, there is one thing that we have to understand. I know we have a lot. We have we do have these. Uh, we have uh, what do you call this? We have social medias, and we all know several types of social medias. We know a uh, WhatsApp. We have Facebook. We have a uh, WhatsApp business. Uh, we have LinkedIn. Um, uh, we have Gigi in Kenya, we have Gigi, uh, we have Alibaba. So we have all these kind of uh, uh, social medias where we can buy and sell products. Now, I am going to talk about integration of this agriculture. How do we integrate agriculture and ICT? You know, we have farmers who grow crops and when they get their products and they have to travel far to go and sell their products. You know, like literally, it costs a lot of like now the fuel, that cost of transport has really gone up and uh, the products or the farm products will increase in price due to the, to the rise of, uh, of the fuel that's going to be used for transporting the potatoes, vegetables, fruits from one point to the other. And now we are integrating, integrating this uh, ICT into agriculture by teaching farmers, and that is including you and I, how we can sell our products online using social media like WhatsApp, uh, linking Facebook and WhatsApp. We can uh, advertise our products. We can use social media to advertise our services. And also we can go to Gigi and be able to um, uh, advertise our services. Now, Now, I want to take you through the practice week on Monday, but it's a very interesting way of starting. Now, I would like us to see if you have Facebook, I don't know whether you can be able to use your smartphone or yes, if you have Facebook, you can uh, open Facebook. If you don't have Facebook on your screen, you can um, go to Play Store and download Facebook. That is the first practical. The second practical will be uh, linking Facebook with WhatsApp. After linking Facebook with WhatsApp, we are going to advertise our products. It doesn't have to be agricultural products alone because this is agriculture and business. You could be having, and you could be an SME and you have a small business that you are running. Uh, uh, probably maybe you have a shop that you are selling items, electronic shop, or maybe you have a barber shop, or you have a service like car wash, and you want to adv advertise your service or your product uh, yeah, on the, uh, uh, in the internet or in uh, social media so that you can get many customers. You know, you are used to your own local customers, and now you are advertising yourself so that you can get customers within your country and even outside globally. Then we are going to open Facebook and also link it up with WhatsApp. And uh, we are going to go through that first practicals. Therefore, if you are already on WhatsApp page, please go on your WhatsApp page, click on WhatsApp, click on WhatsApp. If you are there already, you will see three lines on the top on your right. You will see three lines on the top on your right. Click on those three lines, click on those three lines, and then see a word written menu. After the word menu, you'll see your name as you see it in profile. Then you'll see some other words written below their pages. If you can see the word pages, click on pages, please. 
click on pages because now I am already in introducing you to agriculture integration of ICT in agriculture. Integration of ICT, uh, we are integrating now and we are trying to uh, register our business online. Now you have already click, clicked there. Can you see something on top there written create? Can you see create? Can somebody just give me a response to know that I am there? Can you see create on your WhatsApp on top? Yeah, for me, if when someone... I click, for me, when I click the three lines, I notice uh -huh. the options. I have new group, new broadcast, link device, share no. messages, and settings. No, yeah. Okay, you are not on the right platform. Uh, you have to be, first of all, you have to go to Facebook. Let it just open Facebook. We have the blue words written Facebook on top of your screen. There's uh, the blue word written Facebook on top of your screen. Uh, and then on top of your screen, you have some other icons. But on your right, as you are seeing your screen, on your right, there are three lines, not dots, but three uh, hori uh, horizontal lines, three short horizontal lines. Click on those three horizontal short lines. Yeah. Okay, anybody there? Yes. We are yes. there. Oh, okay. Yes. We are there. We are okay, there. now we have, you have pages. Oh, excellent. Now you have pages. Click on pages. Just see where pages is written. There's a word there. There's a flag. There's actually a flag, something like a flag. And that flag, there's a word written there, pages. Already there. Already Already there. Yes, excellent. You are now yeah. very good students. We are now together. Okay, let's go mm -hmm. on top. Mm -hmm. On it's something the, the page is going to open. Then on top there, you're going to see create. Yes. Click on create, please. Done. Done. Yeah, we are there. Okay. Now excellent. Now we are going to you have to name your business. You are an SME and you, maybe you are a farmer and you want to name your business, you can name it. You can give it your name, for instance. You can say uh, Carlos, um, Carlos um, um, Farm Produce Farm, Farm Produce Shop. Carlos Farm Produce Mini Market, Mini Market. You can call it Carlos Farm Produce Mini Market. That's an example. Okay, you can also call it uh, Jen's, um, what do you call it? Jen's Electronic Shop. Or, or you can call it Margaret uh, Ladies Wear. So call, give your name, the name to your shop, it is their page name. Can you give it your name? Whatever business you like, whatever you may want to think or imagine you can, you can do in future, we are now learning how to uh, market our products and our services online. Have you given it a name? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, since you have given it a name, uh, you can be able to click there next. At the bottom, there is a word next. Click on that word next. Another page will open. When that page opens, on top there it's written, what category best describes your shop? Now, let's have one person to give us what he has chosen. What have you chosen, uh, Professor Carlos? Uh, they, they said my, my name is, is not accepted. What is your name of the shop? Someone yeah, else? Can somebody else speak up What's from the there? Uh, Someone else? Is grocery store. What? Grocery, grocery store. store. Okay. What? Yeah. Okay. What is your name? Yeah. Ruth Lillian. Magic Shop. Ruth oh, okay. Magic Store. Okay. Ruth Magic, Magic Store. Okay. Shop. 
So, so we have Ruth and this Magic shop. shop. Magic shop. shop. Yes. Magic shop. Now, since we yeah. have uh, okay, Ruth Magic Shop, and then uh, mm. on what category best? What mm. do you sell in your Magic mm. Shop, Ruth? You should mm. write there. What do you sell? Mm. Hey, Ruth. What what do you sell in your shop? Glossary. Ruth. Glossary. Glossary. What do you Glossary. Glossary. Okay, now, and, and in that store, store. you are going to write uh, groceries. Yeah. Yes, write, write groceries there. Write groceries. Yeah, it's so done. If you write groceries, groceries, uh, if you write groceries, you will see wholesale groceries. You will see supermarket, convenience store. You will see supermarket, you will see superstore. You will see a lot of other words coming in there, okay? So you can click, what does yours show Ruth? When you start clicking, when you start writing grocery, by the time you reach G-R-O-C-E, you will find other things appearing below there. Click on any one of them. You can either click on uh, supermarket convenience oh. store, uh -huh. or you can click on, um, yo. you can click on supermarket convenience store, uh, you can also click on, uh, you can click again on wholesale groceries. You can click, click up to three, then write again the same word grocery, something else will appear. Uh, something else will appear there below. You can click up to three categories. So that is now, you can click up to three. And when it appears there, you click, and then you go to create at the bottom. You see there, you can click either two or three. Now you have you can have it as a superstore. After you have done, you have supermarket, convenience store, wholesale groceries, and superstore. Now you have that is what you are you are engaged in in your shop. At the bottom there, mm -hmm. you create you click create. And once you click on create, are you there? Someone else, whatever whatever product you have written there, if yours is a, is a shoe shop, you have to write men's shoes. And then if, as you write men, men's shoes, you'll see the categories are flowing below there. You can click on one of them, it comes in the box. Then repeat again, men's shoes and another category will come, click on the, the next category until you have like three things appearing in that box. Then click on, Create. Click on create at the bottom. Has somebody gone through there? Have you reached there? Any yeah. problem on the way? He's giving okay. us, he's giving me contact location. Very good. Now, as it gives you contact and location, yes. there's something written website. Don't click anything on website. On contact, uh, you yes. will write PO box. If it is address, you write PO box. And then also where you come from, you write the you write your town. And then as you go down there, you write your code, you know, PO box code. For Nakuru, it's 2100. You write for Kericho, fill, fill in all those details. And then at the bottom, you are going to create next. Yeah, we are also asked for our phone numbers, contact numbers. Yes, it's a very interesting subject, but because I came in a bit late, I think I'd rather start it afresh next week on Monday. Uh, I beg to stop there. But you can keep on going down until I'll give you the instructions. I have the instruction manual. Uh, we are, we're going to learn so many things on how we can create, how we can open up these uh, social medias. Uh, we have always been using them for friendships or just getting um, messages or for wishing others happy birthday and all that. But now we are going to use social media for marketing our products and marketing our services. And then from there, we are going to go to the next 
uh, package, and that is going to be, um, we are going to go to, uh, oh, we are going to go to Gigi, how to create Gigi and how to, um, how to how you can also be able to um, register your business on Gigi. And you are, you are going to get instant, you're all actually going to get instant response from all your, your, your friends in, in WhatsApp and, 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 and Facebook. And on this Facebook, we are going to link Facebook and WhatsApp so that once we have reached the, po the point where on Facebook and invite all your friends into your shop, online shop, and you're also going to click, you'll click WhatsApp and invite all your friends uh, uh, into your online shop. And that way you are able to get more customers from me uh, selling um, crafts, you know, Kenyan men crafts like Kyondo and all that. You're going to get uh, customers locally and globally. Even if, if you are selling farm products, you are going to get markets locally even. So we, what we are going to do, I won't take you again further. I'll stop there because uh, I know it's a very interesting subject. I was only giving an introduction today. Then we are going to go on. As we go on, we are also going to go into digital marketing and we are also going to go into writing. Writing, I will also teach you or train you on uh, writing content, writing article, and also be able to publish them, be able to uh, proofread, proofread them uh, uh, on um, doing proofreading online using Grammarly and turn it in. And um, uh, there's another this other word is really it, it sticks in my tongue. But we have to proof proofread it online. I shall also go through that one, and you'll be also you also be able to uh, you will be able to learn how to do Upwork and then also Medium.com and be able to publish your 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 article there. And once you have published your article, you're also going to go into bidding. And after bidding, you're into business. So this is kind of uh, ICT, integration of ICT in agriculture and business. It's a long program. It's a long uh, package. But as we go slowly, we are all going to learn. And we can all be able to work from home. You can bid and be able to write articles. When you are, you're given an article to write, you can Google and get some content from the Google and you know rephrase all that article and be able to um, proofread it and also correct grammar online. And uh, you are able also to send that article to the client and you can earn. The other thing is also writing an essay. Uh, we shall go through that one, but this is going to take quite a long time. It's a process. Um, so I'm going to stop there with your permission. Let me stop there so that next week or the other weeks to come, we can continue with Facebook, but you can continue practicing until you reach a point where you are inviting your friends. Mm -hmm. And you're also going to download the pictures of your products. It will reach a point as you are working on your Facebook, you, uh, you'll see some um, commands telling you now, uh, download pictures of your products and copy paste them on the wall. And as you go on, you'll find that it's not a very hard process but we can go on next week and continue. Thank you so much for listening. Mm -hmm. If there's any questions, you can ask. The second, the second practical will be Gigi. Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity that you have given me to give you introduction. This is just an introduction. Wow, thank you very much, Madam Susan. That was very interactive and very interesting. Yeah, we've not had such a session for a very long time whereby we are interacting with the presenter. And uh, this just wowed me. Yeah, looking forward for the next presentation whereby you're going to take us deep into uh, the integration of ICT in the various businesses that we are engaged in. Um, any question anyone may be having in regards to what Madam Susan has introduced to us today? or any request you may want uh, to make to her before the next presentation, so she can have time to work on it. Yes, uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much, Madam Susan, 
for me, I'm really impressed and I believe everybody's really impressed with your presentation. And a lot of us uh, learn a lot from this process today. And I know, I believe some of us, it is new and some of us, it is like a practice or uh, a reversal. So, but I want to, I want to ask that this particular session, I want to appeal to the rest of the UNAL team for this particular session to continue because this is key for us that the UNAL team is going to utilize all these functions that are very, very rich that will help the use of uh, the, the internet system to ensure that uh, we'll be able to present smart programs and be able to interact and develop smart programs. You know, so this is very, very important. And as we all know that our, our, our core program our core focus is promoting climate smart agriculture. And that is really promoting food sufficiency, food security. And this is very, very great. So therefore I want to appeal that this one, it continues until we have the end of it so that people have the foundation, they have the, the headway for us to be able to manage our information and be able to utilize it for uh, for UNAD as well as also our various organizations. And then in turn, we can also be uh, tutors to, to the community people, I mean, to other organizations in our countries where we are. Thank you, this is really, really educative and keep it up. I enjoy it. Thank you very much, Dr. Carlos, for your thank input. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Your feedback. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, sure. It was such an interesting conversation and interactive uh, presentation. Yeah, anyone else with anything to add on what has already been said before we wrap up our meeting today? Yes, Dr. Atama, you can go right ahead. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I just uh, want to uh, appreciate uh, Susan for that presentation. And uh, uh, I want to also uh, ask if this uh, particular um, uh, procedure is, pe is uh, peculiar with uh, only agriculture or you can use it for anything you are selling uh, online. I um I was particularly uh, 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 amazed because uh, down here we have uh, a group of uh, young young people. There are about uh, six of them that are working on uh, an app which they call Agro Agro App. And what the app uh, is going to do because they are still developing it is according to them because they have been making presentations in so many uh, 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 forums. And uh, what they are uh, proposing is that they are developing an app that will connect farmers to consumers. So rather than uh, going to buy from those who have bought and all that, you can connect directly to farmers and get your products directly from them. So I want to know if this is an app that have been developed with respect to agriculture or if it is general in terms of addressing maybe anything that somebody wants to sell online. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, right now, we because of COVID-19, it's a project, it's actually a program here in Kenya uh, because of COVID-19. And this program is sponsored by the UK government together in collaboration with the Kenyan government. And because it is sponsored here, I'm only giving a privilege by putting it here on UNAD. But in Kenya, we have uh, we have platforms already that uh, have introduced to them to continue trainings and trainings are there every day, online trainings. Uh, then we also have um, 
uh, this uh, organization called Africa. It is women. Uh, it's uh, integration. It is ICT for women and office, and it's the same uh, organization. Get organized in Ghana. Is it Nigeria? You can give me. Uh, you can. I can. I, I, we can exchange our email addresses. Then I will send your email address to the headquarters. Does they can arrange a training for you? But for me, here in Kenya, and especially in Nakuru, so I am a trainer with Aqui. And uh, I'm training the youth. I've trained them since last year. And right now we are going deeper into um, letting more youths get trained so that so when they close school, they are in the campuses. And when they are on vacation, they are only doing assignments in the, for, the, for the campus, but they don't have anything extra they can do. So this is something, a program that has been created for the youths and below 35 years so that they can have something to do at home and also get an income at the same time. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Thank you. I will, I will put my email address and I will take your thank you. Okay. Any other question or any other person who may be having something to add on to what has already been said? I don't want to close and out. Is there any other input or contribution? Okay, now we have come to that shame whereby we wrap up our meeting for the day. But uh, I'm going to invite our continental president, Dr. Carlos Sanko, to uh, give us the wrap up uh, for our meeting today awaiting for our next Monday meeting, which I believe shall be very interesting. And um, uh, we are looking forward to learning so much from uh, the presenters that are going to come on board. Dr. Richard Sanko, our continental president, you're most welcome to help us wrap up the session. So thank you. Thank you so much today. Thanks to everyone who, participated throughout this uh, wonderful session. I believe it's very, very educative. All of us learn a lot that we're going to utilize for the furtherance of our, our private as well as also the U network. And this is great. So this is a team. So let us continue to unite and focus to develop Africa. I believe what we are doing now, the capacity building is the key that will help Africa to be itself and to be able to take care of itself. So let's go and prepare for next week and Madam Susan and others, please, you know, you have any technicality, you have any professional areas, that you think you can bring on board to help to impact Africa through uh, capacity building, this is the right movement. This is the forum, this is the platform. We provide, we created this platform so that we have an avenue of exchanging you know, all these values, these valuable indicators to help impact or give back to African people. And this is great. So I thank you for the, the diaspora people who are here, as well as also the African resident. Thank you. Thank you till we see you next week, Monday again, once more. Please invite new people, bring the old ones, remind them and bring new people onto this forum. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Carlos. Again, our blessings thank are with you, you in, in Sierra Leone. May, yes. may there be peace there. Thank yes. you. Thank you. God thank bless you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night.